Ladies and gentlemen, there's a good chance that this Federal Bureau of Investigation agent who was arrested and indicted and possibly could face up to 20 years in prison for several crimes, several felonies, there's a good chance that this person would not have become embroiled in these criminal acts were it not for the Trump investigation that he helped start. So if it wasn't for the Trump investigation, and this, this, this individual started with the Papadopoulos setup. So the official that was indicted at the Bureau, okay, retired top Federal Bureau of Investigation counterintelligence agent who led Trump probe arrested for his own ties to oligarch from that country. This individual charged with breaking U.S. sanctions against the, the oligarch from that country and laundering currency. Okay, so you have to ask yourself, would he, would he be in trouble right now if he had not, if he had not begun the investigation into Trump and set up Papadopoulos? So if you read right now, this is a Fox News article, though not referenced and related to the indictment. The former bureau agent, while serving as chief of cyber crimes section at the bureau headquarters in Washington, D.C., was one of the first bureau officials to learn of allegations that George Papadopoulos, a campaign advisor for former President Donald Trump, boasted he, that he knew of dirt on Clinton, which, by the way, he never boasted. Okay, launching the investigation to alleged, okay, so, the Crossfire Hurricane investigation. So, he's one of the people who started the most apoplectic, one of, the, perhaps the most apoplectic frenzy and hysteria in American political history that amounted to absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was a complete fantasy that was conjured up and fabricated. They said that Trump would be indicted and charged, and instead, the people who tried to set him up and frame him are now going to prison. And this isn't, this is actually even better than the Durham probe, okay? Because you have one of the people who set up Trump now facing 20 years in prison. And this is Biden's, for, for helping an oligarch evade sanctions. Okay, so these sanctions now were very serious. Obviously, they're even more serious because of what's taking place in Europe, the invasion that took place under mashed potato brains and his presidency, during his presidency. So Trump essentially got this man arrested and indicted. Or if Trump had never been in the White House, there's a chance that this, this individual would never have gotten involved with the oligarch. And so, it's interesting. It's really interesting because you have a situation where oftentimes government officials, um, you know, there's it's like a corrupt law enforcement uh, mentality. And I, I support law enforcement. I support, uh, you know, the men and women who risk their lives every single day. I'm talking about the, the bad apples, okay, where they think, hey, you know, I am the law, so what's the problem? Again, I, I do support law enforcement very much, but there are bad apples in every industry and in every walk of life. And so that is the most, you know, sinister type of criminal because if you're at the Federal Bureau of Investigation, if you're, if you're tasked with protecting the country or protecting a city and you are the law, well, then if you commit crimes, it's very difficult it's very difficult for you to get caught, okay? Because who's going to investigate the law? And so this individual probably said, hey, I am leading the charge against Trump. They'll never accuse me of working with this oligarch or trying to help him evade sanctions. So had he never met Trump, or had had Trump never, sorry, had he never initiated, helped initiate the investigation into Trump, he might never have 
gotten involved in the way that he did. Okay. Um, it's really interesting when you read about this on Fox News and elsewhere. Everything that he accused Trump of doing, he ended up doing, or almost everything. It's really bizarre. The Trump curse is real, ladies and gentlemen. You you could see what happened to Alec Baldwin last week. And like I said, that was a tragedy. That woman should be alive today. Okay, but you look, whether it's actors or comedians or officials or attorney, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 attorneys, you can look at everybody from Eric Schneiderman to Michael Avenatti to um, uh, Smollett to this uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation agent to Alec Baldwin. I mean, everyone that tries to take down Trump is himself or herself taken down some way. It is it is very bizarre, okay? It's like, it's it, it's very bizarre. Anyway, hit subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen, and to my people, to my viewers who are waiting at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., thank you so very much. Share this everywhere. This is really important. This is a really important segment. He essentially got this man arrested and indicted by doing nothing. See, hit subscribe, become a member to my super chat, to my super thanks, thank you, to the to Patreons, thank you so very much, and uh, go to hagoodman.com to read my writing in the Hill, Huffington Post, Salon, the Jerusalem Post, the Federalist, and other publications, and become part of a newsletter there, and um, left, right, center, Democrat, Republican, Trump supporter, never Trumper, Trump voter, um, Communist, socialist, anybody watching, God bless you. Have a beautiful, safe, wonderful, prosperous, healthy, joyful year full of happiness for this year and beyond forever. I only wish people love and doesn't matter. I don't, I don't care about tribalism. I just, I, I'm just giving my distinct viewpoint. Okay, protected under the First Amendment, but it's, it's all love for everybody. Okay, I just want people to understand that when they watch this channel, stumble upon it. Anyway, the point, though, when you try to see when I when I report or give my analysis on Biden or Hillary Clinton or Democrats or the people who cheated Bernie Sanders and, um, you know, apparently enjoy never ending military conflict, which is why I vote against them, the Democrats, um, when, when, when I give my viewpoint on Biden or Hunter, I don't judge Hunter morally. I don't judge Hillary moral. I don't, I don't say Hillary Clinton is immoral for all the terrible, <laughs> for all the terrible things that she's like pushed for from uh, the destruction of Libya, uh, you know, under President Obama's administration of failed intervention there. I mean, we, we can go to a list, okay? But I'm not, I don't say, oh, the Clintons or the Bidens are immoral. I don't say that. I, and I don't even have any animus towards, I don't dis, I don't really dislike them. I don't despise the Clintons or Bidens or Democrats. I don't despise Democrats, even though it sounds like I'm, you know, going all in all the time when I give my viewpoint. I don't say the Democrats are immoral for the immoral things that they've done. Cheating people in their primary, having a phony and fake, absurd farce of a, of a primary contest and primary, um, you know, lying to their constituents, all creating a, a, a fabricated McCarthy era, Red Scare, cutting and dividing up society in so many different fragments, pitting people against one another. I mean, the Democratic Party has done a number on this country, but I don't, I, you see record highs in inflation, shutting down economic activity. I can go on forever. Okay, but pushing for endless military interventions. We have the Lincoln Project embedded within the Democratic Party. Now we can go on forever. But I don't say, oh, I can never be friends with anybody who votes Democrat. There are a lot of people on the Democratic Party side who have that mentality. Okay, I know these people. Unfortunately, they have that mentality. It's immoral to vote for Trump. But when they say that, they're displaying their ignorance of how corrupt and immoral their own side is. <laughs> I, you know, one thing we, I learned growing up is that po you don't talk about politics, religion, or money. Those are things you don't talk about. Or, and, and, or, and you shouldn't 
you should put friendship and family bonds and 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 you know you, you know your friendship above those three things okay you wouldn't not be friends with somebody because of religion. So why would you not be friends with somebody because of politics? Because you've convinced yourself that you're on the right side of history? What, with the Red Scare McCarthy era? You're obsessed over one country, and then President Obama just a couple of years ago said, oh, the 80s want their foreign policy back? I mean, they turn on a dime. They're always changing their tune all the time. And the problem in, in many cases, in many cases, that they've, well, I can go on forever. The point is, as I ramble on, when people tried to preach and give sermons about Trump, oftentimes you had the televangelists of the, the, the atheists who happened to be televangelists who turned politics into their religious gospel that they, they preached. And so you had these people who constantly come out saying, I have sinned and it's, whether it's Alec Baldwin who accidentally ended someone's life, I mean, or, you know, a, a, an actor fabricating a crime just to, just to denigrate half the, almost half the electorate. Um, the, the attorney general in New York years back having to be forced out. Um, you have a Michael Avenatti who was on MSNBC, CNN. I mean, how many hundred, a couple hundred times, 150, 100, 130 times. He's serving prison time now for extorting Nike. How did that happen? <laughs> what? Nike? I mean, could you even imagine? Could you even make this up? And so you have this Federal Bureau of Investigation agent. Now, and it's like, okay, um, now he could be going to prison for a very long time. And you have all of these people. It shows, it shows the type of character. It shows a very unique kind of immorality, not, not judging anyone or pontificating. But for those who claim that Trump is the embodiment of immorality, he... He really is a foil to actually immoral people. <laughs> he really just is like, doesn't have to do anything. And all of these people try to go after them and then they're revealed for who they really are. Okay. The, the, the zeitgeist or this obsession that half the country has with Trump, that he's the embodiment of criminality. This is fabricated. This is not true. And we know it's not true because they couldn't indict him. You can indict Hillary or Hunter or, or Joe, or, but the system protects them. The system doesn't protect Trump. It's trying desperately, desperately to stop him, and they still can't find anything. So anyway, when you obsess, it's like stay in your lane. Stay in your lane, always in life. Sometimes you have a couple lanes you're in, and that's great because you're doing a lot of different good things and wonderful things, but stay in those lanes. Stay in your lane. Don't focus on, don't obsess over somebody and try to like, you know, plan the person's downfall because that type of individual has a whole bunch of skeletons in his or her closet and it just doesn't work out well. You know, to, on a microscopic level, you know, people, you know, numerous times, just, just in media, just being on YouTube, they've gone after me. It hasn't worked out well for them. <laughs> I don't ever go after anyone. You see this a, a lot on the left, though. The left will, like, obsess over this individual, that individual. They do a whole bunch of videos. But you don't see, you don't see the obsession from, like, for example, Tim Pool. People go after him on the left all the time. I mean, you, you'll have five or six people on the left do, like, 20, 30, 40 videos on Tim, Tim, Tim Pool. Tim Pool doesn't do videos on them. Dave Rubin doesn't do videos on these people. I mean, not obs not obsessively, you know. If they're in the news, fine. Um, who else, you know? Stephen Crowder doesn't obsess over these. So, it's it's people with a voice. So it's like, on a microscopic level, that's happened to me before. And in, in, in the past, people have gone after me. It hasn't worked out well for them. When you're when you're trying to do something out of ego, and you let your ego get the better of you, and you're trying to 
put down somebody else. What's the phrase? Be careful who you um, step on on the way up because you'll see them on the way down. I forgot that phrase. Anyway, so it's just really interesting. It's interesting that people who – the left is about public relations and image and tribalism and loyalty to and allegiance to some viewpoint. And that's a really tough place to be because it, it deceives people like Michael Avenatti or this Federal Bureau of Investigation agent or others into thinking they're ah, – you know they're on the side of where you know groupthink. If you're if you're with the herd, if you're with the mainstream, what what could happen? You're doing the right thing according to these people, but then they get you know revealed for who they are. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. It's actually being a part of the herd. Growing up, that too was never something you wanted to be. You wanted to always be an individual. That's the basis of punk music and rock and roll. And now it's like psh, music industry is just. <laughs> they're firmly along with aging uh, Hollywood directors and intel agencies and, you know, the mainstream, whatever, you know, we can't be different. And it's like, this. what happened to, like, punk and rock and roll? And it's like, what happened? How did we get here? How did we get to this, this point where people aren't interested in being individuals and, and not being part of the herd or crowd or anyway? It used to be in the 80s. Uh, I learned it from you, Dad. Or no, what was it? Uh, <laughs> um, no, just say no. I, f I forgot. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. This is this is a philosophical topic. This is not just like with Trump, those who go after him have what they want happen to Trump happen to them it's like it's like a it's like a curse almost I'm being you know facetious when I say that well maybe not really anyway give me your thoughts hit subscribe share this everywhere it's a really really important segment thanks everybody I'll be, I'll be back at 11 a.m